Hi everyone, since it's just a few days until Christmas, I have a holiday card I want to share with you today. If you're watching this after Christmas, I'll share at the end how you can just change this into an any occasion card because I'm going to be making just a generic winter scene that you can use for any kind of card. So to start off, I brought out this stamp set from Penny Black. It has a lot of illustrations in it which are great for practicing coloring techniques and I especially thought this style of illustration would be good with a more artsy effect like watercolor. So I brought out my distress markers which are kind of like watercolor markers. So that's what I'm going to be working with today. If you don't have these you can just use a plain old watercolor palette and that would work. So I took out a piece of watercolor paper which is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm taking the bottom image which is quite a large stamp so it takes up a big portion of the card front and it's a scene of a whole bunch of houses with a starry sky and I thought this would be a really fun winter scene to color for a holiday card. So since I'm going to be using distress markers I need an ink that won't bleed so I'm using black stays on ink to stamp this and I'm also taking out a mouse pad to put under my piece of paper because this is a very detailed illustration and I want to make sure all the fine details get um, imprinted onto the paper. So the mouse pad just gives it a little bit of give so that it gets in all the crevices of the paper, especially since watercolor paper is usually a bit more textured. By the way, I also turned it to the smoother side of the paper so that I would get a better imprint. So once that's stamped, I can move my mouse pad aside and I'll start coloring with my distress markers. So the way I color this is I just choose um, random colors. I'll slow it down a little bit and turn my marker so you can see what colors I'm using. And I just color a few sides of each of the edges of the paper, sorry, of each image. And the rest of it doesn't have to be filled in because once you start adding water to it, it spreads around and then you get a nice effect where the darker parts show shadows and everything else is filled in but a little bit lighter to give it more depth. And I'm just really using any colors I feel like right now. It doesn't have to be too realistic. Um, I'm sure most houses are not brightly colored, but in this illustration it looks fine anyway. So you'll see I'm painting the church on the left a bright red color and though that seems like a bit much it turns out looking okay at the end. Again if you don't have distress markers you can just do this with regular watercolors and I would just start at one edge maybe on the left edge of all the images and then as you fade out onto the other edges it'll become lighter and give it a lot of depth. So I'm using a water brush here once I have all my um, areas colored in and this makes it really easy to do because you don't have to keep dipping your brush into a cup of water or anything like that and this is just really mess free. When I'm switching in between colors I just have a baby wipe on the side and I just rub my brush tip into it really quickly to clean off any of the extra color. So this is what it looks like when it's done. You'll see the water effect really looks nice with um, this kind of illustration. Um, for the ground, I just took out my iced spruce distress marker and I just rubbed a whole bunch of it underneath the houses so that I could create a shadow underneath and I'm just spreading that out um, to make it look like it's on a ground instead of just floating in the air. Once that's done, I took out a mask to cover up all of these houses. This mask is really easy to make. All I did was I stamped the same house image onto a sheet of scrap paper. Just plain thin typing paper will work. If you have post-it tape that will work as well and might actually make this easier because it'll be sticky and this will help you later on. All in you the have video, to do is fussy see. cut around the edges and then place it down and line it up exactly with your stamped image. So you'll see this already has ink on it because I already used it. So I'm going to tape the sides with some washi tape just to keep that in place. Um, the top parts are hanging off, but that's okay as long as you're careful later on. So I took out a few pads of Distress Ink in different shades of blues and purples. Whatever you have will work. 
um, but I just took out what I think would look nice and I'm going to have a gradient from purples on the bottoms to blues on the top. So I took out my sponge daubers and I just have um, one sponge for each color family so I have one for purples and I'm going to use it for both shades of purples that I have. So I'm starting out with seedless preserves and I'm just starting at the bottom of the image and working my way up. You'll see that I'm only working one way away from the paper so that the parts that are not taped down don't curl up and I don't get ink under it. So you just have to be a little careful with the pieces that are a bit delicate like the top of the church but as long as you work in one direction it should be all right. So I moved on to my second purple color and once that's done I moved on to salty ocean which is a blue color and whenever I work backwards I'm just really careful not to curl up the paper but going both ways going from blue to purple really helps blend the colors better and then I'm moving on to my second blue color which is broken china and once that's done I thought I needed a little bit more of the shaded lilac color so I just went back and added more and then when you take the mask off, you can see what all of the blending looks like. And um, it turns out to be this beautiful sky color that gives a really nice backdrop to the houses. There was some white space along the horizon, so I just added some more of the ice spruce dis distress marker and blended that out with water. And you'll see that I actually save the mask. I keep it in the back of the stamp packaging so that I can use it for future use and I don't have to fussy cut um, those houses out every time. Once that scene is done, I wanted to do a fun technique with the Distress Ink background. Since Distress Inks react to water, I wanted to try a technique where I splatter some water on top of it and this kind, kind of ends up looking like stars because I added some perfect pearls into my mini mister. So you'll just see here I have my mini mister filled up with water and I have just the plain clear perfect pearls and all I'm doing is scooping up a little bit of the perfect pearls putting it into my mini mister and shaking it up so that I have a pearlescent water spray so once my spray is made instead of spraying it directly onto the paper I wanted to get bigger droplets so I'm spraying it into my hand so that it just clumps up into bigger droplets and flicking it onto my paper and you'll see this forms some really big areas that just look like water right now, but once the water reacts with the Distress Ink, it'll have these really nice areas that will be pearly from um, the Perfect Pearls. And then for some smaller droplets, I just took the nozzle out of the tube and just flicked it on. And this ends up looking like some really cool stars in the sky. So you can see when I tilt that in the light, you can see some of the pearly water there. Um, and I'm just going to set this aside to dry before I move on to my next step. Once that's dry, I took out a sentiment set that I wanted to use. This is a new one from Winnie and Walter. And it's really versatile because there are a few big words that, that have a good presence on a card. But then there are smaller words that you can use for any occasion. So I'm just going to use the big scripty happy and then put holidays under it. So if you wanted to make this a card other than a holiday card you can see how you can just take any sentiment stamps that you have and put any sentiment here and the scene doesn't look too much like a holiday card and you can just use it for any for any kind of card you want for example there's the big hello and you can just write hello friend and you can send it and it just looks like a winter card or you could change up the way you color the sky maybe use some reds and oranges and then that would be a great card to send in the summer or fall. So I'm just lining that up the way I want it to look and I'm mounting it onto my acrylic block and this time since I'm not going to be putting water over it I'm using my Hero Arts black dye ink because this gives a really crisp black image and I'm just inking that up really well and stamping that in the top area of the sky. This might go over some of the areas where we put perfect pearls, but it's okay because it doesn't mess it up at all. And if there are some areas that you miss like I did, this is a really easy stamp set to just go over with a black marker. 
to fill in any of those. I just mounted it to a white. I just used my black distress ink marker. That was the same distress marker because box. that's what I had on hand. To give and it a see, finishing this just touch, gives it a I really also added some solid dash look. lines around the edge. Um, I just used a black fine tipped marker for that. And that's it. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you decide to give this technique of a distress ink scene a try. It's really fun to um, watercolor images like this and I feel like it gives a really awesome card that looks like you spent a really long time on it but it really doesn't take that long at all. And like I said you can change this up to be an any occasion card for any time of the year so it's a really versatile technique to try out. And if, if you, you want to see video, a list make sure of all the supplies I use, channel. you can head over to my blog, which I'll, I'll link to in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Happy Holidays!